Welcome everyone to another amazing episode of Soul Chat. You already know the conversations that go deeper than the surface level conversations the rest of the world might be having. So thank you so much for pulling up here for your soul self. You know it's always going to be good. I have an amazing guest with me today, which I tell you, these guests really just build on each other week after week after week. When you hear the topic we will be talking about today, you're going to say, yes, God, because these are the, these are topics that are always going to be in alignment with where you are mm-hmm. and where God has needs you to go, needs you to go. <laughs> so more about her, Dean Mercier. I believe that happiness and sadness exist in a delicate balance. The goal is to not allow our happiness to overtake the good sometimes. The successes and the laughter and joys in order to maintain our emotional well-being. Dealing with grief has piqued my interest since I was a little girl. I remember attending funerals with my father and wondering, why do people die? Why do people cry? How can we overcome death? Existential questions that my six-year-old self could not answer. As an adult, however, it dawned on me that there is a way to defeat death. It is by living life fully and intentionally. It is by recognizing that every moment we have breath in our lungs is a gift from God. It is preparing for tomorrow without fearing any curveballs that may be thrown our way. Hardy Mercier is a licensed clinical social worker, certified grief coach, retreat facilitator, and transformational speaker. And she also recently launched something so amazing, which I'm so mm-hmm. excited for her to tell us about at the end. We're going to wrap up yes. with y'all contacting her for this, especially for our families. I think it's, it's, it's important for families to begin to experience new views of the world together. Mm-hmm. Um, so she also has a company called Creole Adventures, where she specializes in family travel, romantic travel, date nights. For the man who has a hard time planning or the woman who wants to give her (laughs) planning abilities over to someone else or for the mom who's just tired of planning (laughs) and wants someone to do it for her. So we'll talk about that at the end. And I think that's just so beautiful to see how you've evolved. Let me just also sidebar note and send y'all back to episode 41. Okay. (laughs) Her dean is a repeat guest. Okay. I've had so many guests that I, I really, I'm actually excited to invite some more people on that have already been on because- um, to watch you grow, to watch you change, to to see your posture. You've always been strong. So you go back to that podcast. That was a strong one too. It's episode 41, uh, Redefining Grief, which I think is a beautiful thing that even when we talked about it and in my life at that time, I had recognized that grief is a constant visitor. And if we are unaware of grief, we will push it away. We will tell it go away. We will tell it not yet. We will tell it Oh, I'm happy. Let me just happy happiness you to death, right? Um, instead of sitting with it to hear the story. So today's topic, however, is the seasons of growth and being around others who do not see you in your growth, but remind you of your past. Cardi, welcome to the welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Before we dive into the juice, because honey, y'all are about to get hit with a Kung Pao today. Okay, I have, I got some amazing. The mic is hot, baby. <laughs> the mic is hot. <laughs> um, just when I fun. say I feel it deep down in my spirit, yeah, I do. Yeah, yes, I do. Yes. Ebony, yeah. thank you so much, Boo, for having me back. Thank you know you. I love you. Yes, you know I, I love you, you back too. You know this you. is this gonna be. Powerful conversation. Yes, yeah, it always is. You know, yes. I, I told you how to come look through your profile and say, "Where's she been?" How did I girl, been? <laughs> when God released me to tell that story, yes. Mm-hmm. All we gonna say is, "Well done." Child. Yes. Amen. Amen. So mm. I'm so happy to have you today. Before we get into the juice of you know this talking about this topic, um, who are you today? Who am I today? Ooh, baby. I stand alone, Mm -hmm. anchored in this truth that God has me, not man, God. Mm -hmm. Before I may have wavered just a little, Mm -hmm. if not a lot, 
But I stand in this truth. On October 30th at 203, <laughs> God's got me. Yeah. And I'm anchored in him and ready to release anyone that is not in alignment. Mm -hmm. That is my truth. Mm. You ain't got to name no names on this podcast. No, baby. <laughs> That's not the purpose. <laughs> That's not the purpose. <laughs> right? It's like your spirit when you're on that petty mode, you said, and, 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 and you. <laughs> And you, right? Mm. Um, wow, that is it's so in alignment mm -hmm. with my spirit and uh, seasons I've been navigating um, and really identifying, you know, to what you said, you said, I stand alone. And I think sometimes it's hard for us to understand that because a lot of us are very codependent. Yes. <laughs> you know, right. I mean? it's been my year journey releasing that right. crap. Yeah, we're so codependent on friends, uh, sometimes family, spouses. Um, I had a recent podcast guest who her her cousin told her, how are you so happy and you single? Mm -hmm. Like, what? Right? But that's just really how some people process life. But we don't realize we have these deep codependency issues. So when you say something like, I stand alone, mm -hmm. that takes courage. Maybe. You know, you know, as we talk about it, I think about a trip I took by myself to go visit a friend. My good friend, my best friend is made in Chicago at the time. And she ended up going to a meeting or um, she's getting her PhD. So she ended up going to class or something. And I stood alone by myself. Right. And I met another individual that I had met in the city before. Mm -hmm. um, and I called her up. I'm good for that. I We don't have to be friends on the phone all the time every day but if I made a strong connection with you and I'm in your city you'll get a call hey mm -hmm. let's do lunch yeah and I end up doing lunch with this individual and oftentimes when I go to cities I will stop at the cemetery sounds mm -hmm. strange huh I will do a walk in the cemetery why because nobody gonna talk to me back and when I do the walk, I was doing that walk in the cemetery in Chicago, right? I got the pictures in all on Facebook and probably um, IG. As I'm doing the walk with her, she was like, why do you walk the cemetery? I said, the cemetery is a reminder. This is where it ends. So nothing else really freaking matters. Mm -hmm. This is where it ends, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is the dash. Mm -hmm. There is an ending. Mm -hmm. We have a beginning. Yeah. Here is the dash. But yeah. too many times, individuals spend most of the dash complaining and whining and not showing up for their lives. Mm -hmm. It's the dash. Mm -hmm. The dash is where it's at. Yeah. The dash is where the wisdom comes. Through the trials, through the tribulations, through the ups and the downs, through the suicide of thought, through mm -hmm. it all. It's the dash that matters. Because that end date, you won't even know it. Mm -mm. And I remember being in that cemetery and said, in my post, I said, I don't care about the wife title, the mother title, the sister title, the career title, the therapist. None of that matters. Don't put it on my tombstone mm -hmm. if I didn't live. Don't put it on my tombstone if I did not live. It is the dash that matters. Mm -hmm. And the dash is where I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. And the dash is where I live. Because after the dash comes that end date. You may not even know it. Mm -hmm. You won't be alive to experience it. Right. You won't see the emotions. You won't see your family cry. You won't mm -hmm. see their pain. It's the dash that matters. Mm -hmm. So showing up for my life is paying attention to the dash. Mm -hmm. And learning to heal the past. So that I can move forward to the future. It's the mm -hmm. dash. Yeah. It's the dash. It, it literally is the dash. Yeah. Nothing else matters. Don't put enough titles on my tombstone if I didn't show up to live. And I'm going to give you breaking information. I'm in the process of doing a nonprofit organization called Live, living intentionally, victoriously, with expectations. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means when I wake up, I show up mm. for the day. 
Mm -hmm. I'm prepared mentally for the trials. Mm -hmm. I have, I have the emotional tools in my toolbox because what happens, especially with grief, we think, oh, I, I'm going through a divorce, this grief. I'm death, death, grief, financial grief. Your kid's going to college. You're grieving the fact you never lived your life. So you don't know how to live it on your own mm -hmm. because you're hiding behind the mother title. Mm -hmm. You understand, Ab? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. It's the dash that matters, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we think about grief, we grieve things that may break our heart. We grieve things that may bring us joy. But the truth of the matter is we're so caught up in the, you know how many mothers I meet? What are you doing for yourselves? Well, you know, I have the kids and I have the husband. Da, 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 da. Baby, you die by yourself. Stand alone. Mm. Do something for yourself. Mm. And I always tell my clients, if your name does not show up on your calendar, you are doing yourself a disservice and you are chipping away at your soul and dying every day and early death. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's the dash, Eb. Listen. I want women to focus on the dash. I want men to focus on the dash. I want children to focus on the dash. I want our parents to focus on the dash. That's so Stand real. Alone. Stand alone. That's so real. Listen, I had chills the whole time. You kept saying it's the dash. <laughs> you mm -hmm. said it was like woo. It was like a surge mm -hmm. of energy because we do um, sometimes we're either high. I think a lot of people don't recognize, you know, and this is something I'm heavy on teaching. Emotions are letting you know that there's something over there mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. That is not yet. You haven't, you haven't brought your spirit back from that place yet, mm -hmm. you know? And that's real. You know, it's real. It's not, it doesn't, it's, there's no judgment behind having mm -hmm. those emotions. I can think of a no. few situations that come up that I'm like, yeah, my spirit is it's coming it back. Is, it's on its way back. Okay. And I, and I'm, and I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm detoxing to get, to get the message really in my body and to understand mm -hmm. the assignment. Mm -hmm. Um, However, not only in the past, but, you know, I don't even, I think the way we consider the dash, mm. it's so, it's almost like frivolous, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like you get caught in the, like you said, bringing up the mothers and the wives who, you know, we're just going every day, right? You wake up, getting kids ready for school. You know, it's just, it's almost like if you took a robot and mm -hmm. put them in your shoes, <laughs> mm -hmm. they could do what you do, right? They yeah. could do what you do with no intention, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think this almost op opens my eyes to even the question I asked you and reconnecting with you, like, where, where have you been in life? How's your spirit? And mm -hmm. I think your response was, if I'm not mistaken, was um, like focusing on your, your family, mm -hmm. shifting your focus. And I think even for me, this is a time where um, God has been really revealing that to my spirit. And mm -hmm. maybe I haven't identified it as the dash, but you have mm -hmm. poured that into my spirit and I can't forget it now. Um, but really being able to intentionally live and not be so defined. You know, we live in this culture of like, get the things, get the things, get the things, get the things, you know? And it's like, everything we see with our two eyes can't even make us happy. Yeah. You get in it and you're still empty because yeah. you're not feeding the soul. Mm -hmm. What feeds the soul, right? It's a daily question you should ask yourself. What feeds your soul? Yeah. For me, what feeds my souls is having enriched conversations like this, right? Mm -hmm. What feeds my soul is my boot camp class, 6 a.m., part of the 6 a.m. club, right? Mm -hmm. What feeds my soul is being at the dinner table with my family. I had to learn to remove the superwoman cape, right? Be at the dinner clock dinner table at 7 p.m., provide the meal. I was recently telling my husband that I no longer want the superwoman cape. I'm removing it. Amen. I want the traditional home. I am the provider. I cook, I clean, I do whatever. That is my role in the house. Mm -hmm. That is my primary job. Mm -hmm. 
That is my role. Before I was trying to do that, slacking at it, be a business owner, doing great at it, being an employer, doing okay, yeah, we, we do it okay, right? Right? And then creating a nonprofit, doing all these things, creating my journal that's going to launch on my birthday this month. Do you, do you understand? Called Restored. You're like, how did I restore? <laughs> I had to get through the stuff. I had to yeah. get through the yuckiness mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. I had to have some hard conversations that began to teach me and then began to lead me in a direction that would design not only my path, but feed my soul and push me toward a genuine, enriched, happy life. Mm -hmm. And that happy life is saying, my hubby died today, I'm standing on my own. My children died today, mm -hmm. I'm standing on my own. Because mm -hmm. who am I anchored in? The God and God alone. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, do. I don't want it to happen. Before I would say, oh, Lord, woe is me. That can't <laughs> happen, Lord. Take right. me under. Take right. me under. The, right? right, right, right. But the experience I've had with my creator says, I am going to stand on my own. I mm -hmm. am going to grieve. I am going to coexist with the definition of grief. In my opinion, happiness and sadness can coexist to breathe mm -hmm. a beautiful life, mm -hmm. a healthy life. Because I always say this, the moment you reject any type of grief, it begins to attack you and destroy you. Yes. Because it's saying, hello, show up. Yes. Hello, I need to cry today. Yes. Hello, I need to release today. Yes. It can happen. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I, it's anchoring. I had to learn. It was hard. Codependent? Woo! I'm a recovery. <laughs> I'm in recovery. Right? Yeah. I'm in recovery. Yeah. I need the I need the codependent groups. To happen, right? <laughs> I may have to create it myself. Yes. Because I, the truth be told is happiness cannot exist if you are genuinely not happy. Yeah. Mm. You cannot create mm -hmm. happy children mm -hmm. if they don't see you happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. You know, something you said is I've said this, I had a coaching before I actually worked with this client, you know, she said, what is, what is something you're proud of? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I almost feel like that question was to prompt me to talk about, you know, the clients that I've helped do this and that. And I said, you know what? I said two things. I said, if I died today, um, I would feel like complete. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I would feel complete, like I've done enough. I think I'm, my time is not yet. You know, I think there's definitely more to do in this dash. And the other thing I said is, I am so sure about my foundation with God that if I lost everything, mm -hmm. everything, money, just like you said, because sometimes we don't work our mind through that. Mm -hmm. Money, car, kid, like my kid. Because I have, you, I feel like, uh, maybe I, you know, I feel like you think like this, so we're on the same page. I got to mm -hmm. walk my mind through every grief scenario possible mm -hmm. because it's the rejection of it and saying, not me, that would never happen to me. This couldn't happen mm -hmm. to me. That mm -hmm. would hit, make it hit me so hard that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who I was in that moment. Mm -hmm. I would lose all sense of self, right? Yeah. And I know that just like me just putting myself in the future, like if that happened, you know, that I know that I, I would have an anchor. With, I would have such a strong anchor with God that I know I would be able to navigate it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you saying that, you know, sometimes it makes me feel crazy sharing that with people because it's like, I really do walk my mind through those scenarios. You, you know, oftentimes, and I'm going to tell you when you know you're in alignment, right? When you are in alignment, your prayers are answers. It could be the simplest prayer. Mm -hmm. my birthday party theme we're having a soca women all birthday party theme what my guests don't know is baby they come into a seminar we're gonna have <laughs> some fun and then we're gonna have some deliverance okay yes, yes, all right yes. so they're coming to a seminar that just don't know i just dressed it up as we're having an all women soca party but i'm there to wake y'all asses up that's <laughs> the truth yes. right 
wake y'all up to the fact that it's the dash that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you are anchored, I just was like, God, I want a woman DJ. At, I want a woman DJ at the party, please. Provide, did, you know, lo and behold, I'm working out with my gym at the gym and my partner that day, one of my partners, we have sections. She's in sections one. That means you strong and you lifting up the heavy stuff. I'm in section three. I'm just getting back in the gym. So I'm starting from the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. And I see Kim, she has these tattoos on her arm. And I said, well, you got those music tattoos on your arm. She goes, I'm a DJ. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It is the simple, and mm -hmm. I hired her for my event. Mm -hmm. It's the simplest prayers when you become in alignment that get activated yeah. because they're pure in their answers and they're genuine. Yeah. I can't explain it. All I can do is there is benefits, but then there is the fear that creeps up. See, mm -hmm. because when you're in alignment, you, your mind begins to say, well, wait a minute. Is, oh, it's, it's going too, too smooth. Mm. I mean, there's no weed growing in this season. You know what weed does to the plant? It, it suff suffocates it, right? Mm -hmm. So you telling me there's no weed suffocating any plants in my joy right now? Because mm. I, you know, my good friends call me Lily. Mm. Lily in the fields. Because you know why they call me that? Because I can tune anything out. Mm -hmm. I can tune any mess out and be okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be in the same room and not hear what the thing they saying. Because <laughs> I'm in a zone. I'm focused. Yes. I'm drilled in. I'm yes. concentrated. I'm, I mean, on a mission. Mm -hmm. See, Miss Lily, she gets things done, right? Mm -hmm. And so they jokingly call me Miss Lily. But let me tell you something. When I'm in the Lily zone, weeds are not growing because... I'm anchored in, if they begin to grow, I'm anchored in you, God. Mm -hmm. You'll find a way to get rid of it. That's right. If it tries to suffocate me, I know I can go to your word. I can listen to a sermon. I can listen to a song. One of my favorite songs right now that went viral. The devil is alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I just love singing that over yeah. and over and over again. <laughs> so when you think about turning your, your ashes into beauty, it's getting in alignment. And let me tell you, Eb, what's keeping us from being in alignment? Fasten your seatbelt. What's keeping us from being in alignment is the distraction of the heavyweight relationships that we're holding on to because as we evolve, we didn't drop them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what's happening. One thousand percent. One thousand. We're trying to take them into this new season with us, and we have not grieved the fact that they cannot go into the new season just because they've been your best friend for the last 25 years. But no, God, you don't understand. She was the matron of honor at my wedding. No, God, you don't understand. <laughs> she was there when I delivered my baby and he was eight pounds and she helped. And the stories we tell ourselves, oh, no, God, she yeah. planned my bachelorette party. Oh, no, God, she introduced me to my boo. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if the weight of them being in your life mm. is keeping you from your new season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Girl, I don't know. I don't know. You do know. You do know. I do. You I don't know, know what? I, that is, that is, you know, to me, it's, um, you know, I'm not sure if you remember, but, you know, I heavily focus on chakras, which is just another fancy term for our energy and really helping people understand energy to be able, we're so outside of our bodies that we don't understand that heaviness you feel, that anxiousness, like a lot of times we don't recognize, like we have, and this is the thing about codependency. If you've mm -hmm. always been in a relationship, if you're always around people, and sometimes even your kids, right? As moms to take a solo trip, that's that's healing, right? That's that's mm -hmm. I know every mom out there that's ever done it for the first time, we can all attest to feeling a little bad, grieving a yeah. little bit that we couldn't bring the babies, right? But mm -hmm. you know, you had to do it because there was there was that nurturing time of self and hearing your own voice and, and all of that that you needed to become anchored in your own level of peace. And I was literally just thinking about this today, thinking about okay, 
you have to be able to identify that your spirit is telling you when someone is no longer in alignment with you. Mm -hmm. What is present? Frustration, mm -hmm. anxiousness, mm -hmm. feeling outside of yourself, you know, mm -hmm. not really, you know, as someone, someone said online, you know, if you, if, if you are around someone and you go look yourself in the mirror, do you feel more like yourself or less like yourself? Mm, speak it. Right. And, and it's, to me, it's just, if, if we can't pay attention to the energy that people bring into our lives. I know that by my lonesome, I have a lot of peace. When people come into my space, mm -hmm. to where I'm at, oh my God, you're so peaceful. Oh my God, I just love being around you. Okay, well, I'm not sure if I can say the same about you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like Linus. I always give this example, like Linus with that little dusty blanket. Mm -hmm. You yeah. never get that dusty blanket? <laughs> and everywhere he go, the dust, you know, the dust is uh -huh. up. You know, and I think yeah. sometimes people don't realize and or we, not even people, we need to be the ones to realize, you know, do you feel calm in that presence? Do you mm -hmm. feel like the need to gossip or to, to, to have conversations you don't normally have? Mm -hmm. um, but just really surveying these relationships. And I think you are so right that that is a common denominator of why we don't elevate. Mm hmm we don't ever elevate. We do not elevate because we have not learned how to release. Yes. And can we sit with this for, for a moment? I'm asking Ev. Mm. What does release look like to you? For me, release, depending on what the release is, Father God, I need cousins to take me off the edge, right? Keep me off the edge. Mm -hmm. Depending on what the release is, is, is connecting with the Father. Depending on what the release is, I need a good solid cry okay. depending on the releases i may need to go to one of those places where you can throw plates mm. but you know how i know how to identify that i spend time in therapy mm -hmm. i spend time with a psychiatrist if i have to mm -hmm. do you understand what i'm saying yes. i spend time in my season that i'm in now i spend time with the nutritionist mm -hmm. right because it's not just here yes to be intact, the brain, mm -hmm. it's your heart. Mm -hmm. It's the way you operate. It's mm -hmm. the way you move. All of it. And I, and I think about it like this. If the president had the baby, I need a cabinet too. <laughs> I need the doctor. <laughs> and, right. and, and it's not just the PCP baby. I need a, um, a OBGYN, mm -hmm. urologist. Mm -hmm. neurologist dermatologist <laughs> i need it all right yeah because i need that same team if the president have it baby i'm gonna have it too mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. he or she she maybe you know mm -hmm. the most powerful person in the united states whatever they have i have it too mm -hmm. that's how mm -hmm. i think about it mm -hmm. who's on your team who's on that cabinet meeting to take care of her dean Who's on that cabinet meeting to take care of Ebony? Who's on that cabinet meeting to take care of hope, joy, mm -hmm. pain, sorrow? Who's on your team? Mm -hmm. And some of your teammates need to be fired. Fired. And you're the only person that can do it. That's right. So you got to show up. That's right. You got to show up. What mm -hmm. does showing up look like? Baby, you got to define that for yourself. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you how to start. Mm. contact a therapist a good one mm -hmm. contact a therapist a good one interview them contact someone that's going to check you mm -hmm. contact someone that's going to hear you contact someone that's going to create a safe space for you to break and they can help you put yourself back together mm -hmm. identify the thing that works for you so, oh, you need to go and do um yoga. That may not work for me. Let me tell you something. I um when I got back in the gym, probably like August or September, I got back in the gym. I'm a boot camp girl. Like I like the ooh, the heavy breathing, the challenge of that hour. Mm -hmm. It's intense. Like I'm 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 that type of girl, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, for convenience, I said. Let me sign up at a gym closer to the home, right? It's about five minutes, not even a five-minute drive versus the 20-minute drive to the place that I really, really love. 
which is I can fitness. And I go to this wannabe new gym, baby. In three minutes, I knew this was not home. Mm -hmm. Didn't mm -hmm. challenge me. The people didn't look like me. The music they played is not the play that motivate me. Mm -hmm. I knew it's not mm -hmm. home. I came home and I said, this ain't it. I'm going back to my old gym. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the 20-minute dry. I'm mm -hmm. going to do what I have to do because that fills my cup. Mm -hmm. People are not replenishing their cups because they don't know how to identify what they like, what they love, what they need to dismiss. Am That's I making right. sense? 1,000%. 1,000%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to address, I want to address two things, something you talked mm -hmm. about. I've been on a 30 day detox that ends tomorrow, actually, um, mm -hmm. which would really make it 31 days, but, um, it has opened up my spirit so much, Herdeen, mm -hmm. to how we don't even know our own bodies. Don't even know our own body. So I stopped drinking coffee. I thought it would be hard. I'm, I, was, I was the woman who was like, coffee was like, that's like, that's my man, you know, mm -hmm. like that's my man, man, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed to, to, to take it out my diet because it's dehydrating. It does a whole bunch of other things. It gets your heart rate going, all these things that are actually bad for the body. And I'm, I was aware and I had also identified it because I focus a lot on energy. So it's like energetically, this is kind of like feeding into trauma. When I, when I drink a cup of coffee, right? Because what it's mm -hmm. doing to my body is it's traumatizing it, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm looking at it from that perspective. So I said, okay, I went out and got me a little teacup, a little smaller cup. I said, all right, at least I'll downsize my, my cup size, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, stopped drinking coffee for the detox, didn't have any coffee headaches, none of that, right? Um, but so much, like the smallest thing, just noticing um, what my body did like, what, what my body didn't like. The times I slipped up, I slipped up. I didn't even, I want to call it a slip up. I put up maybe a, a teaspoon because we're not supposed to do sugar. It was like, and I ran out of, I ran out of honey. So mm -hmm. I put like not even a teaspoon of sugar in my tea and it messed up my stomach so bad. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I would have not have been able to identify that had I just been eating sugar, whatever sugar that was. Like I normally eat sugar. I had a cup of juice. I had these little party cups for my daughter's birthday. Mm -hmm. Little tiny party cups with gold mm -hmm. glitter. I had a cup of Welch's grape juice. I wake up in the morning. I'm laying there. I'm like, my mouth is so dry. Mm -hmm. You know, I never knew ju juice dehydrated my body. Mm. So and it's, it's something about what you're sharing, sis, that I'm actually going through. Um, I had, I was so happy. I was so content when I saw that I was a little porker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when I say porker, <laughs> I was um, eating, drinking, drinking. I'm not a drinker. I have a pina colada here and there. But when I say drinking, my people go to alcohol. I go to soda, right? Mm. Especially a Haitian, a Haitian jupiter soda. Watermelon. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Watermelon soda, baby. I was having the fried chicken going to sexy bone, doing all that stuff, mm. right? And by the time I, my body started tingling. Mm. <laughs> started tingling my tips started tingling mm. my feet started tingling non-stop i had tried a russian pedicure for a first time i thought it was damn my feet so soft it's tingling <laughs> <laughs> that thing scared me so bad i made a pcp appointment asap i need mm. blood work i need everything i got on that scale that says that scale said 223 pound point three <laughs> i said lord have mercy you're a little too happy. Your happiness is out of control. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to tame this a little mm -hmm. and get back in the gym. Mm -hmm. Did that blood work? That blood work said diabetes, pre-diabetic. Mm. I said, oh, father. Oh, father. It's time to start running. Because mm -hmm. who? You talking about her, Dean Mercier. Birth three, have three kids, right? Right? Mm -hmm. My heaviest child was eight point. 10 ounces, my second born tomorrow. Call it twin. She looked just like me. Naturally, not because I'm superwoman, because I'm afraid of needles. And you gonna tell me I'm pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and I can reverse it if I just change my eat. Say no more. Right. Because at the end of the day, her dean cannot handle a needle for that fear alone, baby. Cut the subject. <laughs> 
I grew, I <laughs> cut back on the fried. I started cooking yes. my meals at home. Yes. I started um looking for different recipes. I was making yes. meatloaf the other day. Like I started doing things where I thought I could never because I was like, but that's right. Her team, <laughs> her right. Team loves sugar. Her <laughs> team, my godson knows I love sweet <sighs> corn. And this is just to a test when you make a, a mental shift in yes. your mind that things are going to change, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. when they put it in front of you, it's not tempting. No. He purchased a sneaker bar for me, right? I snack a snack up, snack a hard. So I and those typically don't survive 15 minutes in my hands, right? Yeah. That baby lived in my purse for three days. Mm -hmm. And then I was hungry one day. Because when you start working out, your metabolism starts to kick in. So your my nutritionist, you know, I have a cabinet and I had a nutritionist. My nutritionist said, you need to eat be eating every two hours. You're not eating enough. When he looks at my pictures, my diary food pictures, you're not eating enough in the day. You mm -hmm. need to be eating every two hours. So he looks at that. I make the adjustment and one day I slipped up. And that's the thing, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. As you grow, as you change, you're going to have slip ups. But that's who's right. in your corner to say, baby, it's a slip up. Refocus. Yes, Reset. Exactly. Or are they going to remind you, man, you, 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 you messed up last time this year around this time. <laughs> Looks like the same picture. Right. Right. Yes. Hardeen, I had people feeling bad for me because of my diet. No meat, no dairy, no sugar. You know, I just feel so bad. <laughs> so, so, I said, you, you know gotta what, go. Ebony, you know you what, gotta Ebony, go. <laughs> you know the shift that happens for me? The shift that happens for me is like, dang, you had it for 44 years. Soon mm -hmm. to be, because November 28th, Thanksgiving is my birthday. <laughs> I'll be away with hubby, but I'm having my party the 14th. But... What what you don't realize, you you have subjected your body to something that might be toxic to it That's for right. however long it is. That's right. But the moment you decide to change, once you begin to feel the benefits, yes, you when you know it's how, we all yo yo dieted, we all have done stuff. Mm -hmm. But some of us, it takes us to hit rock bottom mm -hmm. to believe. Oh shoot, it's the dash, and yes. in the dash, if I don't take care of Mm -hmm. In the dash of being 20, I didn't take care of my body. Mm -hmm. In the dash of being 30, I didn't take care of my body. In the beginning dash of 40, 40, 40, 42, 43, I was yo-yoing, right? Mm -hmm. But baby, opening this chapter of 44, I declare in the name of Jesus, <laughs> this part of my life, this health will be a priority yes. for me. It is, yeah. but it is a priority, you know, and that's the thing is that we can, again, you know, we talked about a few things, right? Toxicity mm -hmm. is a, is, food is also a codependent friend, a codependent, yeah. you know what I mean? We resort mm -hmm. to the sugars, the things because they're comforts, yep. right? They're just a comfort to you. But if you really remove certain things, and even when you slip up, right, mm -hmm. that, you know, drinking that little cup of juice. Mm -hmm. You think I'm going to go drinking those little cup of juice again? Like you said to your no. point of how it, it changes know, but your I think people, you know, because we have to understand that this translates across all space and time, whether it's food, foe, mm -hmm. friend, people, people mm -hmm. do the same exact thing to us mm -hmm. where you, you know, this is something that I've just done where I might remove myself and because I, I have seasons. I have seasons where God is like, you need to be quiet. You need to be mm -hmm. quiet and you need to be still. So no, you don't need to be on the phone calling your friends, checking on them. No, you don't, you don't need to do none of that. You don't need to go hang out with nobody. You don't need to just know. And this is actually the season I'm in for the past, you know, month or more. Just be still, just be still and just listen. So I remove myself from people and I begin to see, wow, you know what? My life is so peaceful or I haven't experienced this or I haven't had this thought. So am I going to be propelled in the season where I do want to socialize? to be around certain people or to go to certain places. Um, how do you identify? And I think we kind of already covered it a little bit. Um, for you, how do you identify when that season in that relationship, sometimes it's the work of the line of work we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just many, there's many seasons for a lot of things. How do you identify that that time is 
has reached its transition point and it's time to transition out. I think sometimes, oftentimes, the best way to identify is really open up your spirit to listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to the whisper. I think Oprah says it best. We typically wait for the thump across our head. But if we get in a line with our spirit, we'll hear the whisper and say it's release season, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes mm -hmm. it's not an individual, it's a job. Sometimes it's not your partner, it's your finance, the fear of your finance, mm -hmm. you know? There's people that hoard money. That's There's people that can't keep money, mm -hmm. right? So it's really, really, really tapping in in who you are making your spirit feel at home instead mm -hmm. of enemy's territory. Mm -hmm. I hope I make, I, like, your spirit has to feel at home. I don't know if you can see this right here. Mm -hmm. Anchor. Everywhere I have it. My vision board, there's an anchor. Mm -hmm. I even con contemplated getting a, a tattoo with an anchor on it. Because mm -hmm. I want to be anchored with the creator. Mm -hmm. Because I believe when I am anchored in him, when those waves come of doubts, he'll help me calm them out, right? Yes. When that weight of anxiety come, he'll help me. When that anger come, he'll calm me down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are anchored in the dash, you begin to experience the life God wants for you and the mission he has you on will be activated. I'm in activation season. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He has activated me and I'm taking them out mm -hmm. one by one through these podcasts, right? Through speaking engagements. I am taking them out. And the beauty of when you're activated and anchored in him, you don't have to do no chasing. It comes to you. Did I call mm -hmm. you for an interview, sis? Mm -hmm. No. Nah. We were talking <laughs> yeah. and you was like, let's get on the mic. I was like, okay, boo, let's get on the mic. Yeah. The old me, the old me that felt like I had to do it on my own and wasn't anchored in God. I was chasing shit down. Mm -hmm. I was chasing opportunities down. No more. Mm -hmm. No more. Mm -hmm. I have activated my faith in my creator that they will chase me down and I don't have to do a thing. Mm -hmm. But show up and share my favorite thing to do, wisdom. Have wisdom. You know, I love this word called POW. I created the acronym called POW, Pearls of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Let's have these chats like we're doing now. Yeah. Let's listen to the stuff that's going to make us go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Man, the Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. No one. Mm -hmm. I fear death no longer. That's right. It's happening whether I want it or not. That's right. When, where, I'm not committed to that. I'm anchored to today, October 30th. It is now 241. Our conversation, this moment is where I am right now, presently with Ebony, the one and only. This is, the, <laughs> I, just, I don't know how to do it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. The money will come. The opportunity will come. The clients will come. My journal, three-year process. It's being done this year. I had to go through it mm -hmm. to really now live out what I have in that journal called Restored. Mm -hmm. How can you restore if you don't face the truth? How can mm -hmm. you restore if you don't anchor in faith? How can you restore if you don't have the right connections? Mm -hmm. Oh, talk about that. How do you get to all oh, the right connections, the right connections? Talk when about you think that. about the, the right connections, oftentimes we stay too long on the job for the money, right? We're connected to the money, not the purpose. And because we're not in alignment with purpose, we don't show up in life. It makes Mondays dreadful. You dreading Monday, you're not in alignment. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You're connected to the money that that thing brings. Yeah. But when you get in alignment, the money flows through, baby. You don't have to chase anything down. I'm experiencing that firsthand. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. When you talk about connections, who are you connected to? 
mm-hmm. your connection, mm-hmm. the people you, you, when you met them and they felt your connection and your energy, you see them years later, you can still call them and say, Hey, da, 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 I need this favor. Hey, how can I serve you? I see you have something happening with your nonprofit. How can I serve you? I see you have something at your school. How can I serve you? Mm-hmm. Her Dean is serving with the gifts that she has. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. The money up- opportunities will come through the serving. Yeah. How about making sense? 1,000%. Okay. 1,000%. You know, mm-hmm. you talked about connections. And before you put on the, the join the podcast, I was about to record. Uh, Mm -hmm. Instagram and it really was that in this season Mm -hmm. I am most grateful for my cabinet Mm -hmm. I am most grateful for my friends who they're so connected to their purpose to their Mm -hmm. you know to God to just to life Mm -hmm. If they could send me a scripture, they don't know. They they never called me to say, hey, what you going through? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. friends that, you know, when I think about my cabinet and, the, you know, I had a friend call me yesterday, you know, he was on my heart and I didn't have the energy to send you a text. So I felt like I would call you, you know, we end up the call, we, we end the call praying, you know. And I said, you know what? I desire that for every woman mm-hmm. and man, but mm-hmm. to have people in your cabinet that pray for you. It's not about what you could do for them and what they could Mm-mm. do for you. Mm-mm. It's not about, you know, uh, the business goals and like Mm-mm. all of that, all the surface level things, but the people who can like all, you know, I got friends where all of that is embodied. However, the basis and the meat of, of our connection is mm-hmm. how's your spirit today? How you yeah. feeling? Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. and and I think it's taken me time in my life and maturity and and navigating, you know, launching my business and and you know, twenty twenty, you know, becoming a single mom and then mm-hmm. doing all the things. Let me sell this. Mm-hmm. Let me sell that. Let me do that. And then recognize, you know what, God, you didn't put me on this earth to run like a rat. Mm-mm. You didn't. You didn't take me out the job to be in my Mm-mm. business Mm-mm. operating the same way, Mm-mm. right? Mm-mm. And it's it's we live in this culture where it is challenging. In this last podcast, she said that she said this. She said, you know, sometimes in her mind, she would feel like, well, I'm not hustling, you know, so so I'm not doing enough, you know. But she said, I had to reinterpret and understand that resting is work too, mm-hmm. you know, and taking and, into and even what you're saying. I believe when we become in alignment, you know, when we are in alignment and we're chasing purpose. And we know that our gift is so valuable and that our silence is non-negotiable. Your silence is non-negotiable. You showing up somewhere and it not having alignment with you and you feel like I just got to trudge through this and I just got to work through it. What I always Mm -hmm. say to people is, you know, it it really to me, I don't care what anyone else says, Mm -hmm. even me running a business is the, it's the, it's the, it's the, the most trust. You know, this, this, this dance that I'm doing right now is my ability to really say creator. Yeah. I trust you. Yes. Yes. I trust you. I'm not yes. trusting, you know, someone's, you know, you know, my, my child's father doing this or, you know, mm-hmm. this coming mm-hmm. from there or overcomplicating and, over, you know, stressing out how this thing is going to happen because that mm-hmm. energy in itself. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just shared this on, on threads. I said, if faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain, if, if mustard seed is tiny, it's so tiny, you could barely hold a little one in your hand. You got to mm-hmm. plant a few of them just to make sure you got it in there, right? <laughs> if faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain, mm-hmm. then what does fear the size of a mustard seed do? Mm-hmm. What does doubt the size of a mustard seed do? What does worry the size of a mustard seed do? And it's not that I don't experience these feelings like every other human but I, every day, you know, if there's one goal I have, it's like, you know, what, Ebony, we're going to move in faith. We're going to identify that some, some of these little crunchy emotions are moving through and then we're going to mm-hmm. choose how yeah. this thing is going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, and I always say this and I think people don't really understand it to their core, you know, but I think we say we have faith. We say we believe. We say we trust. You know, so many people, you say, you trust God? You believe? Mm-hmm. You have faith. You know, I think most people, well, yeah, yeah, of course I do. And they can quote some scriptures and tell you mm-hmm. some things. But how do you live your life? Mm-hmm. 
right? Do you, yeah. you know, even living in our purpose? That's yeah. still in vain. Mm -hmm. If your mind ain't right and you you were too aligned mm -hmm. with making the money and, and yeah. that job and how, you know, it, and you're really out of alignment because every time you walk in, we've all been there. Yeah. You walk into the job, you're dreading Monday. Yeah. Fridays become celebration. You can't wait mm -hmm. to go. Right? Yeah. Celebrate two days of your life. And you do that how many times a week? How many times a year? It right. doesn't add up, baby. I'm no. celebrating every day because tomorrow isn't promised. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, oftentimes people don't understand. You know, the people that celebrate the entire one, I'm one of those. And let me tell you the entire month of their birthday. And let me tell you why. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you why. For many, many, many years, her Dean Mercier come September, October, would have depression leading into her birthday. Mm -hmm. Because that age, in my mind, nobody else's mind, I'm saying myself, and if you're somebody that identified, tag me on the po pod and just say, that's me, raise your hand so I know I'm not alone. Tag me yeah. in the podcast. Tag me. So many, oh, 40 is coming. I need to be here by 40. Mm -hmm. right? 39 is coming. I need to be here. 38 is coming. 37, 36. And I was just, I was dreading and hating my birthdays mm -hmm. because that means with that age came a level up in an expectation that I wasn't meeting. Yeah. So I felt like a failure. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was taking in what social media was saying, what the world was saying you should be doing and how many gurus out there that haven't really been through anything. How many experts that haven't really been through anything were yeah. saying, but what I am saying is starting last year, baby, you can't tell me nothing about November. It's a celebration. Following me on her D Mercier Instagram. You'll see <laughs> I turn up. Yes. Why? Because I'm celebrating the fact that he delivered me. Because right now I wouldn't have been able to do this interview with you. We would not have had this powerful conversation this pow pow pearls of wisdom we mm -hmm. would not have had this because i would have been dreading my birthday mm -hmm. in a dark room with the blind shut crying mm -hmm. why me lord why 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 I, why i ain't successful why i ain't successful i'm 35 <laughs> years old i'm about to be 36 why me yeah. That's 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 what have been happening. Yeah. Now, baby, I'm 44. You can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be thinking, where are we rushing to go? Are we, are we, we rushing to go? You know, when people say to me, especially in the healing line of work, you know, I, I got so far to go. Where are you going? Yes. To the grave? Like, I don't yes. understand where you are going. And that yeah. mentality, like, you need to remove that statement. Because I know you headed to the grave. That's one place I can guarantee you you're yeah. going. But other than that, I don't. where are you going? Can I say this thing? And one of the revelations <laughs> that has happened to me, sis, and thank you for breaking this up because it's about to set somebody free. When I walk the cemetery grounds, there are people in that ground that has been in that position longer than they were alive. Wow. 1884, 1801, 1798. Mm. all across the world whenever I travel I will stop at a cemetery just to center myself do you hear what I'm saying mm. you will probably spend more time in the ground as bone rotting bone and I'm passionate about this because you're not paying attention to the dash mm. this is the dash what are you going to do to live living mm -hmm. intentionally victoriously with expectations my expectation is I'm living through the dash. Yes. I'm anchoring in him alone. Mm -hmm. The bonus is the husband. The bonus is the kids. The bonus is my parents. The bonus is a sister. The bonus is a cousin. The bonus is a friend. The bonus is the business owner. But at the end of the day, I'm anchoring by myself alone mm -hmm. and enjoying the beauty of the bonus. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I'm done. Yes. So good. So mm -hmm. good. Listen, you spoke a whole word today. And I know that, listen, y'all know if y'all listening to this podcast, you better be taking notes. Okay. Yeah. You better Not only be taking, taking notes, notes. Make sure they tagging me. Her Dean Mercier. Yeah. Because you know why? And I'm not just saying it to be vain. 
because you talked about it earlier. Sometimes you going through a down time and you probably, man, it ain't working out. And you get a text from a friend or you get a text from a client that says, what you said to me last week really helped me. And you go, oh yeah, I, you, 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 get to, you get to take your shoulders and you punch them back and you your chest comes out and say, oh, I do got this. Yes. Cause you never know. Yes. When that tag come in, what I might be thinking. Mm -hmm. You never know when that tag come in, what day I'm having. Mm -hmm. I woke up today. I'm going to the gym to release some steam, baby. The steam was built up in me. I'm going to the gym. I was so focused to get that steam out in the gym, baby. I forgot my sneaker. <laughs> I'm dressed, ready to go for 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm in the motion. I, oh, baby, I'm talking to my head about what I'm processing and what mm -hmm. pissed me off yesterday. I'm talking in my head and I'm da -da 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 and da -da -da. you know how you have those conversations to yourself? That was me. And, da -da 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 and then when we talk, this is what I'm saying, da -da 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 -da. right? Baby, I did it so much that I left my sneakers at home. And I did it so much that my facial expression must have showed that I was really in them. I told you when I go into the field, Lily, Lily showed up. And I had to get out of it by one of my gym mates go, what's going on with you? And and I said, I'm going, I'm going to work out. They came out to five o'clock class. She said, where are you going to work out? You got on flip-flops. You got them flip flops. And I looked at my feet and I go, look at that. Mm -hmm. Today's lesson is when you get emotionally distracted, you miss out on an opportunity to release steam. Mm -hmm. I was distracted. Mm -hmm. It worked out for me. Mm -hmm. My life lesson. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is, I can press reset. The sun will come up tomorrow. That's and right. And I'll be back at the gym. That's right. That's right. People need to honor that reset. Okay. Honor, honor, yeah. try again. Okay. And <laughs> honor the fact, make sure you're around people that allow you to reset. Yes. That's important. Because if people don't allow you to reset, you got to let them go. Mm -hmm. I don't and care. I know y'all are hearing more. this. Mm -hmm. And y'all know who those people are, yeah. okay? You know who they are. You've been mm -hmm. thinking about them. You've been praying about it. This is your sign. This is your signal. These are the red flag. These are the green flags saying it's mm -hmm. go time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's go time. And I think collectively, and then we're going to get ready to tie this up. I think collectively, you know, we need uh, collectively a shift. You know, mm -hmm. we, we do need to shift on how we show up, you know, as adults, as emotionally uh, stable adults, as adults who live with intention and purpose. And, um, you know, I think when we seek to have anchor in our life, mm -hmm. vicariously, we serve as an anchor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's like a two way street. And it's, um, it's so important, you know, it's so important that we really navigate um, our own, our own mess. You know, because to your point, when we are unwilling to let go, when people people wonder why, you know, why these things aren't happening, you know, and it's like, if you really pay attention to your emotions, if you really pay attention to the things people an animate in you and do they bring out your best, like these conversations, right? I could do these all day. I could record 10 of these and, and leave my day fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what, what are people bringing out of you? You know, and I think in that codependent nature, especially sometimes as women, men too, we have mm -hmm. such a need to uh, fix people and fix things and mm -hmm. be fixers. And like you talked about that superwoman, Kate. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is a new season. Yeah. It's a new season. It's a new day. Baby, I'm turning okay. things into the storm. You know, oftentimes I have not released this song yet and I, and I am going to do it at my, um, we've, you probably hear it on my podcast at the very end, towards the ends of the seasons. I'm redefining grief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to redefine the grief in order to heal from the grief. And I'm not trying to start another conversation because I know we got to end. 
But if you don't begin to examine the pain that the molestation caused, the rape, the financial mm -hmm. abuse, the abusive relationships, the, mm -hmm. the toxic mother, the, the narcissistic parent, um, the narcissistic husband or wife, if you don't begin to really look deep down inside and have those hard conversations, Ebony, it's going to distract you and you won't show up at the gym with no sneakers. <laughs> Ended right there. I said, I, in my mind, I said, I hope she's going to tell us how she still worked out somehow, some way. In no, bare feet. no, <laughs> baby, baby. I went to Walmart to shop for my girls. And let me tell you, I don't know if it's because we were going to talk today. I went to Walmart to shop for my girls. And I'm like, you know what? Herdeen, shift your mind. You're going to be fine. You know, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Shift your mind. So I shift my mind and I go to Walmart. Into Walmart, I'm taking my parents on a cruise. And that's one of the things that I'm doing. I'm focusing on my original family. Yeah. My sister and I decided to take my mom and the dad, no husbands, no kids, just us on a cruise next Thursday for five days. Mm -hmm. The original family, everything starts the original family, mm -hmm. right? It's not <laughs> your emotional stuff, the original family, right? <laughs> so we're going to have some conversations. I know they're going to come up, mm -hmm. but they're going to be healing conversations mm -hmm. because we're at a place of healing and having hard conversations, right? So I get to, to Walmart and as I enter Walmart, Ebony, I kid you not, I was like, oh, they got a sale basket. I see some, do I need another baited suit? No, but I get, I grabbed one. I was like, oh, this will look good. I love Adi. Let me, let me, let me grab that right there. Grabbed it, put it in the cart, my aqua, my favorite color. Ebony, I went to grab another one. Turn around, cannot find my cart. It's 6.25 in the morning. There's not a lot of people who took my dog on cart. I don't know. I spent five minutes looking for my cart because I had the outfit that I wanted in the cart. <laughs> it was on sale, $5. I was like, you can't beat that. $25 a $5? Let me get that to you. Uh -huh. Ebony, it's when I am checking out and I'm pissed that my stuff is gone. But grateful my wallet wasn't because mm -hmm. it was on me. I look up, something says to look up and I look to the horizon and because aqua is my favorite color, I can identify it anywhere. <laughs> Someone took my stuff out of the cart and put it on top of, you know how the, you know how they hang all the clothes on top and I can, I'm just losing my name of what it's called right now. And they put my clothes on top of, and they took the cart. Did they know? I don't know. Did it mess me up? Yes. <laughs> we had the situation with the tennis shoes. Now I'm having the situation at Walmart. <laughs> I did. You know what I did? I had to anchor in someone that's going to talk me off the ledge. That's going to fill me back up because I was emptying my cup with anger that day. Mm -hmm. Today, this morning, before mm -hmm. our chat. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I do. What filled my cup is someone in my wisdom circle saying, Herdeen, focus on prayer, focus on peace, sending me a scripture on peace. I needed it. And let me tell you something about alignment. On my work job before I came here, there was a training. What was in the training? Yoga. Who needed yoga today? Me. Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> Do you understand? God mm -hmm. knew everything that was going to happen to me before I even had it. And he orchestrated my day mm -hmm. that I would experience this so much turmoil in the morning that when I go to that training, which I forgot what, what it was even about, it would give me the release I need. I'm in alignment and because I'm paying attention to the dash, I'm in alignment. And because I'm paying attention to the dash, I've activated answers, prayers in advance. I'm officially done. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all get some snap fingers. Make sure y'all leave some comments. 
let us know what resonated with you from this episode. I love, we love to hear from you and let, let the people know where can we find you, especially when it comes to Creole adventures. adventures. I know you said okay. her D Mercier on Instagram. Yes. Her D Mercier on Instagram, Creole adventures, amazing episodes on redefining wealth. Please follow me. Cause where I really love to play, I'm on Facebook too. But when I really love to play is IG. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start playing over there on Insta, um, in LinkedIn pretty soon for speaking opportunities. Uh, but I will tell you, those are the places. Instagram, DM me, tag me. Look, watch my stories, baby. I'm a trip in this interview, baby. I'm even more <laughs> of a trip on day to day. <laughs> well, stuff first I of all. You are a Sagittarius uh, in your sight. I tell you, I cannot get away from Sagittarius. You know, y'all are like, I'm a Capricorn. Y'all are uh, one of the signs. Every My, my grandmother, my, my grandmother is the 25th. Oh. My brother has the same birthday as her. Uh, mm -hmm. My daughter is November 30th. My aunt mm -hmm. is November 29th. Uh -huh. My brother is December 11th, December 12th. So, so I, I love the, the, the fire, so to speak. Y'all fire signs. <laughs> I love the fire and the, you know, the energy that you just bring to life. You know, I feel like today was a sermon. I said, somebody gonna listen to this, like she yelling at me. <laughs> you ain't gotta yell at you me. You know girl. what? You, you gotta, gotta read the intro. Boy. You gotta read through the intro and just let them know. I am passionate about the dash. No, ma'am. We'll put that, we'll put that in the caption below. Get ready. Get ready. Because <laughs> if you feel like you're being yelled at, you are because you didn't listen to the whisper. <laughs> yes. You ain't listen to the whisper. You so here's your whisper. thump. Call her D Mercier. Thump, yes. thump. <laughs> yes. That's right. And it's, that's how it is. Listen, yeah. I receive it. I receive okay. it. I receive My body was getting chills this whole time, you know, so yeah. I know it's, it's alignment. I thank you so much for your thank yes. You. I thank you for just, not just, I thank you for honoring your spirit on deeper levels and showing up to the messages that are showing up for you in your life to be able to be here to mm -hmm. share so authentically y'all I do not write questions for these shows mm -hmm. I have my only question is who are you with your story from there we just we <laughs> let it flow <laughs> because I want people to understand that these are the type of conversations like you talked about our cabinet that we should have mm -hmm. in our life we should have people that spark within us that divine wisdom because it's not something that can be taught you can't it's how you look at life how you how you redefine life in a way that gives you wisdom so thank you queen for your time thank you everyone for listening again leave a comment if you're listening on youtube or spotify leave a review if you're listening on apple Podcasts, and let me know if there's topics that you would love to hear about but we love hearing your voice too so make sure you know that your voice matters mm -hmm. leave a comment even if it's this was such a great episode okay <laughs> Help the algorithm help us reach more people. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed and amazing day.